welcome to the Rebel Rave. I am Rob. I'm Dave, and today we are talking The Rise of Skywalker, one month later. It's been one month since we've seen the movie, and we want to tell you guys our thoughts. Now, we were not able to make a review, unfortunately, life situations and travel plans and... Some technical difficulties got in the way. Kids having illnesses, all kinds of things got in the way, so we weren't able to do um, an immediate uh, video on our thoughts of the movie, but because of that, we were able to watch it multiple times already. Um, and we were able to kind of sit and brew on what we thought of this movie. So without further ado, here are our thoughts on The Rise of Skywalker one month later. Now, Rob, you've gotten to see it, I think, three times. Yep. I've seen it twice. Let's do this real quick. Rating on a 1 to 10 scale. Okay. And one sentence review. Go. Okay. 1 out of 10, I will give it a 7.8. Almost an 8. Uh, I will say in one sentence, I really enjoyed the movie. It was, well, that was one sentence, I'm done. <laughs> now, um, I will say this, when I left The Last Jedi, I left not knowing what I felt. It was like, I gotta watch it again. I don't know, I don't know. At the end of the day, I did enjoy The Last Jedi. It's not my, my favorite Star Wars movie, but I did enjoy it. This movie, I left knowing exactly how I felt. It wasn't perfect, but I knew how I felt about it, and I was satisfied with the ending of the Skywalker saga. There's my sentence. I was satisfied with the That's ending. Hell of a run on sentence, bro. <laughs> Sorry, man. I, I failed. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, ready? One out of ten for me, uh, and one sentence review. I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10, and my one sentence review is they had too many missed opportunities in this film, so mm. they blew it. Mm. I am, I've, I've tried a bunch of self therapy, I've gone back and forth. And uh, right now, I don't know, I'm just, I'm not entirely feeling a lot of story choices. There's a lot of great stuff. And let's get into that. Okay. So. Let's talk about what we liked in the movie. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and go first because I gave it the more negative review. So yes, I'm going to talk so. about a couple things I liked. Cool. Um, everything with Ray and Kylo, their relationship, the Force Bond, uh, I mean, I thought that was great. It was a great continuation of what happened in The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, okay. That's it? That's all the good? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, there's plenty more good. I don't know if you wanted to chat about that too. Oh, okay. But I mean, I can name a couple other things too. Okay. Uh, redeemed Ben Solo, fantastic. So Absolutely good. loved him. So good. Adam Driver's physicality alone completely transformed that character. It, part of the bad is it's a shame that we didn't get a single line of actual dialogue from him yeah. other than, ouch. Yeah. Uh, another thing that's great is the trio dynamic. I love them being together. Uh, I love going, them going on an adventure uh, and seeing the chemistry between the characters. Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley's performances are both off the charts. They are fantastic. I love Finn being a stronger character, having more to do. I like Poe being a leader and having more to do. I like R2 getting to ride along with Poe in the droid mm -hmm. socket of his X-Wing. That was great. Billy Dee Williams knocks it out of the park as Lando. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff about this film that I really, really enjoy. And Ian McDiarmid, his performance as the Emperor, you know, it's always fantastic. Yeah, I... Rob, what did you enjoy? I agree with you on... All of this really, uh, it surprises me, a five point something, interesting. Um, you know, th there were things I didn't like about the movie. I thought the the Ray and Kylo chemistry was great. Um, I think the force time, FaceTime, force time, force connection thing, um, it kind of, and like, it kind of continued on what Ryan did in The Last Jedi of introducing the force connection. So that was pretty cool. I mean, they used it in that iconic scene with the, the saber so passing, good. which was so good. Hashtag Ben Solo challenge. Do the Ben Solo challenge. It's great. Um, and so I thought that was cool. Um, I, I do think you can't blame um, JJ because he had a lot to fix with the, with the Last Jedi. He had some stuff to try to answer. He, you weren't able to answer it all. I think it was, it was way too much to try to squeeze into one movie. Um, and so it did feel a little rushed um, at times. Um, but you know, I thought the Kylo and, and Rey um, dynamic was great. There was a little bit of a Raylo thing there at the end, which I did not see coming. And it, when I was in the theater, I said, don't kiss, don't kiss, don't kiss. And they kissed and I went, ah, they kissed, oh well. I didn't hate it. Didn't it's think, fine. I didn't think it was necessary, whatever. Um, Doesn't but, bother me, but it's fine. Yeah, it I, thought, I, thought, I thought Adam Driver, his performance got better and better from movie to movie. Um, he was amazing. I agree, Redeem Ben Solo was so freaking cool, but we didn't get enough of him. Uh, Dave, I know we've talked about this, and if there's one yeah. thing that you absolutely hated, I don't know if I should say it yet, I'll say it, Ben should not have died. It would have been so cool to see what redemption <sighs> looks like in the galaxy. Um, you know, Vader turns good, he dies. I wanted to see Ben go on a journey of atonement. You know, yes. I wanted it to be the end of the Skywalker saga, but to still end with 
promise. And you know, this is something that I changed my mind on. You know, right after The Last Jedi came out, we did a video that was uh, what our hopes and predictions were for episode nine. And something I wanted was Kylo or Ben to die. Yep. And over the course of sitting with The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and some of the novels and comics that came out between them, I kind of changed my mind uh, just in the months before The Rise of Skywalker came out. And then when I saw Ben Solo in action, I was like, please, please, he's got to live. He's got to be able to, again, atone for the sins that he committed as Kylo Ren, uh, sort of uh, rescue the legacy of the Skywalkers and continue on as the, the one that was a true success. But uh, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. You know, Dave, I'm trying to remember. I feel like there was something I had said in that video as well, things I want to see that... I think you said let it go because it's not going to happen. What was that? What's her name? Her name, she's, she's, what? She's not a nobody. That's right, she's a Palpatine. Ray is a Palpatine. I've been saying it for years, people. Ray is not a nobody. And I was so excited when it happened. I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit like, oh, they went with Palpatine on this. But okay, the second that the lightning happened, he, he, he thought about it. Um, the moment where, where, um, uh, when, Pal when, Ka Palpatine. When, when Palpatine tells Kylo, you know, she's not who you think she was. Right there, Dave right? was like, dang it. I was like, done. This um, is not good. I Listen, I like that, that she was somebody, I don't know how I feel about her being Palpatine, but at the end, I knew there had, there had to be something there. Um, you know, I, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind that she's a Palpatine. I thought Palpatine defeating a Palpatine was pretty cool, um, but I was just glad that she was not a nobody. So here's the thing for me. Okay. This totally breaks the film for me. Mm -hmm. This is what this is what my rating hinges on, is that I really appreciated Ray Nobody. I appreciated the idea that someone who wasn't part of the story, as Kylo said in Last Jedi, could come in and fix this or be part of Kylo's redemption into Ben and redirect the Skywalkers. I liked the idea of a woman coming in and standing on no power but her own, and then Kylo has to come and say, no, Ray, you have great power, his power, and they have to make her power derivative of, of Palpatine. It just, it, it just doesn't sit right with me. I really, it, it doesn't sit right with the themes of The Last Jedi either. There's no way this was the intention when The Last Jedi was made because of the combination of Ray being told she's a nobody by Kylo and Broom Boy at the end. The yeah. message of that film was democratization of the Force. Yeah. So that just didn't work. Then the other problem with it is that in that same video where we did our predictions or hopes and dreams for episode nine, I wanted Rey to take the Skywalker name on symbolically, adoptive, in an adoptive sense. And she did in episode nine. She did in Rise of Skywalker. I was right. But now with the added context of her actually being a Palpatine, it kind of feels icky and not right. I'm not sure. It, doesn't, it, it hasn't sat with me right yet. I was totally fine with it. It was a little weird. I was like, oh, that's not what I was expecting, but I was totally fine with it. Dave, in The Force Awakens, she's able to do like the mind control, Jedi mind control on the stormtroopers without ever having any training whatsoever. She's able to duel with Kylo in that forest on Starkiller um, without any training and hold her own. The only explanation to that is she's gotta come from some pretty big badass, uh, you know, lineage. And so I thought, um, you know, her being a Palpatine was, okay, it was pretty cool. I thought it was bull. <laughs> Okay, so we've gone from the good, now we're kind of in the mix to bad-ish. What else do we have going on? I mean, another good thing was Leia. I thought they really did uh, justice to carrying her performance from Force Awakens. I thought, you know, it was pretty flawless how they in integrated the, that old footage into the film, into the storytelling. I thought they did as proper of a send-off as they could for Carrie and the, the character of Leia. I thought the same. I was, I was curious what they were going to do. They had very little mm -hmm. footage, so they had to do a lot of over-the-shoulder shots that mm -hmm. weren't Carrie. Um, you know, they did the CGI with Billy Lord as young Carrie, um, or young Luke. That was another great scene. Yeah. CGI young Luke, spectacular, flawless. Leia, slightly questionable again. Just, just as good as Rogue One CGI. Leia Probably, yeah. But I, And that was a great scene. I like the added context of Leia having been a Jedi and being trained and giving it up because of a vision about Ben. That was cool. I like that backstory. Which, speaking of all that, that whole moment, I know we're a little jumbled, the saber. Leia's saber. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. I cannot wait until that comes out and I can put it on this wall behind me because it was just beautiful. Ray Saber, cool blade color, hilt, and eh, it was okay. I'm not a big fan of the hilt. I love that she got a new blade color. That was another thing I put in our predictions or hopes and dreams video. Uh, I would have liked for an original purpose designed lightsaber hilt yeah. for Ray. Like Leia's. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Um, I thought the, the new characters that they added, like, uh, you know, Janna, I thought she was great. Um, I thought. 
Janna is great, however, I didn't like how she basically sidelined Rose. Rose could have gone along with them on that journey. Rose was an engineer for these big cruisers and such. She could have totally played into the tactical component of taking down that Star Destroyer on Exegol mm -hmm. instead of it being Finn and Janna. And I just feel like it's a little bit of a disservice and maybe a slap in the face to Kelly Marie Tran, who is a fantastic actress and seems to be a great person. Who She just did her job on The Last Jedi. If you didn't like her character, that's fine. You gotta take that up respectfully with Ryan Johnson. Right? But Kelly Murray Tran put in a great performance and I feel like she was done dirty with the, hey, Rose, you sure you don't want to come along on this journey? All right, see you later. That was that felt kind of dirty. Stay behind in case you find the fleet. I'm sorry, when you find the fleet. And here's the thing, I was not a fan at all of Kelly Murray Tran's performance in The Last Jedi. It's, I, as you can see, I like collecting figures and that's like one of the figures I don't have and I'm just not interested in. It's in no way a ethnicity or sex issue or anything like that. I just, I thought her performance was just bleh. So I think the, the directors and everyone, I think they were like, all right, we gotta keep her out, the fans don't like her. And I personally was okay with that. I thought Janna as a first time character that we've never met was way more convincing. And this has nothing to do with acting. Um, just the, the the way they developed her character, I, I like that. I, I thought it was cool that Jana was a stormtrooper. Um, her whole crew was were st mm -hmm. stormtroopers. Um, oh, that segues into something else too. First, yes, I very much like Jana too, and the backstory of that yeah. crew. I'm okay that they let Rose out, but it does segue into something great. I love that JJ made Finn force sensitive now, mm -hmm. and they they started planting those seeds. If there's ever a story in the future that follows these characters, which I hope there is, yeah. I want to see Jedi Finn under Rey. I was really hoping for that. Oh, it's Devin. Hey. Hello. Hello. You're on camera. We're rolling. What are you doing? We're bored. <laughs> We're trying to film a very serious review for our successful Star Wars YouTube channel. Have fun with Star Wars. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. All right, rapid fire. Real quick, we got to finish this up. A couple other things I liked. Harrison Ford's cameo. So Great mirror image of that Force yep. Awakens scene. Loved it. John Williams, he's the man. Yep. Pisana Celebration, basically, uh, you know, desert space running man. Awesome. <laughs> uh, a couple things I didn't like, other things I didn't like. Mark Hamill's hair extensions. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> that's from reshoots. It looked really bad. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, uh, I thought there were great things and bad things. Like I said, it wasn't the perfect movie. Ben should not have died. Another missed opportunity I thought was it would have been so cool to see all the physical force ghosts behind oh, Ray yes. in that moment. I think yes. that was a big miss. Huge um, miss. Another missed opportunity. Yeah. Going back to that. Big, big, big missed opportunity. Um, I personally think The Last Jedi had more moments of like, <gasps> oh my goodness, I can't believe that just happened, than Rise of Skywalker, personally. Yeah. I thought the throne room you know, a uh, moment where Snoke dies. I thought the moment where you where you realize Luke's a uh, force ghost was a little bit more impactful than the moments in Rise of Skywalker. Had that, because they promised, they were like, there's gonna be this jaw-dropping, incredible scene at the end of Rise of Skywalker, and it was just voices. So, yeah. it was cool the voices they put in there, like Freddie Prince Jr., um, and you know- Ashley Eckstein as Ahsoka. Yeah, oh yeah, it was really, really cool. Ayla Sakura, all these, these cool Jedis from like the cartoons and all that stuff. Um, so, that was cool. Uh, what else? Anything else? Great side of characters like like uh, Zori Bliss, mm -hmm. uh, Babu Frick, all of them. They were great. Yeah, yeah. And Palpatine. We didn't talk about Palpatine's return. Oh. You know when his when he cackled in the first trailer. That's when I started getting a little nervous. I mm -hmm. tried to keep it to myself. And then the beginning scene where it opens and he uses everybody's different voices and he you hear Snoke's voice and hears Vader's voice. And I'm like, ooh, I am in. I am buying into this. And then we didn't really get enough explanation of how he came yeah. back, and I kind of went back on it. And you know, it honestly all kind of ended up being, again, kind of hollow to me. And that's why I think those moments didn't hit as hard as they did in The Last Jedi. Yeah. The Last Jedi earned those big moments and those big swings that it took. Agreed. And uh, The Rise of Skywalker just tried to cram a lot into a short movie and didn't earn those moments as much. Totally agree. One of the most emotional scenes to me was when Chewie breaks down um, in front of the X-Men. Ooh, that got me. Guys. That was the one time I teared up in the movie. Man, uh, Joe, Joe, what's his name? Uh, 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 I think it's... Jonas Suatimo? Jonas? Jonas, I think it's Jonas, Jonas Suatimo. However you say it, Jonas, that performance was so good. That scene. You killed it, man. Saw the movie three times. All three times, I teared up like crazy in that scene. I also teared up when the fleet arrives with Lando. That was such a cool moment. There's just too many of oh, them. You know what I loved? But there are more and, of us. And I am Iron Man. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I mean, and all the Jedi. Yeah.
<laughs> so um, there, there were some pretty cool emotional scenes um, that really kind of gave you some chills. Um, so overall, 7.8, 5 points, something. 5.5, maybe a 6. I've got to see it again. I, I'm, I'm going to see it a third time this week. Maybe it'll grow on me. Last Jedi grew on me a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, maybe it'll... Uh, maybe I'll come to terms or reconcile my issues with that. We'll see. So that is our thought one month later. We want to know what is your thought of the movie? Where does it rank in order of all the, uh, you know, the films? Um, and, you know, let us know down below uh, what your thoughts were. Be sure to follow us on Instagram or Twitter at The Rebel Rave. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And hey, may the force be with you. See you in the next video.